Good morning, everybody. Hopefully your day is going well. Take a look. Welcome to Lesson 38. Today we're talking about fractions and mixed numbers on a number line, as well as comparing fractions. And I'm going to show you a little jump start on that job. So let's take a look. So a couple of things. To identify a fraction or a mixed number on a number line, you're going to need to count the total number of unit segments between the whole numbers. That's going to be your denominator. So here, if I have an arrow that you need to identify, you better figure out how many unit segments there are between the whole number on the left, which is 2, and the whole number on the right, which in this case is 3. There are 5 total unit segments, right? Remember, the unit segments is the space. Don't go and count the lines. You're going to end up with a wrong number. You have to count the spaces. So you have five total unit segments between the whole number two and the whole number three. So whatever fraction or mixed number you're writing is going to have a denominator of five. To identify a fraction or mixed number on a number line, you need to count the number of unit segments between the whole number and the arrow. This is going to be your numerator. So again, if the whole number on the left is 2, start at the whole number, count the unit segments up to the arrow. Three unit segments, that would give you a numerator of 3. And the last thing you need to know to identify a fraction or a mixed number on a number line, if the arrow is past any whole number other than zero, that's going to mean it's a mixed number. A whole number and a fraction together. So again, it's past the whole number two, so your final mixed number answer is two and three-fifths. It's past the whole number two. It is the third line segment over, and there was a total number of five unit segments between there. Are you ready to do some on your own? Let's take a look. So let's start off here. Name the fraction or mixed number marked by the arrow on the number line. So I'm past the whole number 3, so I'm going to start with the whole number 3. I better count my total number of pieces, my unit segments between numbers. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 total unit segments, 5 total pieces. Denominators always describe your total number of pieces. Now let's go back to the whole number and count the number of unit segments from the whole number to the arrow. That was only one. So my total answer is three and one-fifth. Not too tough, I don't think. Let's try this one again. Well, the whole number on the left is zero. Remember what we said, zero is the same as nothing. Would you ever say, I ate zero and one half pieces of pizza? No, you just say, I ate half a piece of pizza, right? So if the whole number on the left is zero, we don't have to name it. Nothing is the same as zero. Let's go and figure out our denominator here. How many unit segments do I have? One, two, three. 3. So I'm obviously talking about thirds this time, right? So my denominator is 3. Let's figure out my numerator. Start at the whole number to the left, go to the arrow, and that's only one unit segment there. So that is one third. Last one of these we're going to do, we have the whole number 6. So let's start with that. We better figure out our denominators, how many unit segments, and check this one out. I don't have another whole number over here, right? 
Sometimes they're going to do that to you. We're going to have to count between 5 and 6. So let's go and figure it out. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 this time. So 7 total pieces between whole numbers means my denominator is 7. Now we can count the unit segments from the whole number to the arrow, and we can count over here. One, two, and three. So my numerator is three. I am talking about six and three sevenths, correct? All right, I have one other thing to show you, and it's going to make your world so much easier. The easiest way to compare two fractions is to use what's called cross multiplication. You multiply the denominator of one fraction with the numerator of the other fraction, and then just compare the products. So I'm going to recommend using this method instead of draw a picture because we are going to skip lesson 39 because they want you to start off by drawing a picture. And I'm going, why? Just use cross multiplication. So the denominator of one multiplied by the numerator of the other fraction. So first multiply five times four. Hey, five times four is 20. Then go and multiply the denominator of another fraction with the numerator of the other fraction. 9 times 3. So now we got two products. We have 27 up here and we have 20 over here. Now we can compare them. 27 is greater than 20, right? Now I also want to point out that this method only works when you're comparing two fractions at a time when they want you to list and order other ones we'll get around to showing you a strategy to use for that cross multiplication only works when you're comparing two fractions all right so let's go ahead and do some comparing we have four sevenths compared to three ninths well four times three is gonna give you what that sounds like 21 right Let's go and do the other one. Denominator of one times the numerator of the other. Nine times four is going to give you 36. Once you have your products in place, it's really easy. We're back to third grade where we just have to worry about where the crocodile's mouth opens up, right? Let's try this one again. Here we're comparing five tenths to four eighths. Pick a denominator, multiply it by the other guy's numerator. In this case, it's going to be 10 times 4. Hey, that's 40. And then just do it again. Pick the other denominator, 8. Multiply it by the other side's numerator, 8 times 5. That's also 40. Once you have the products listed, it's extremely easy, isn't it? 40 is equal to 40. And sometimes they might even set it up in a story problem. Jamie walked two-thirds of a mile. John walked three-fourths of a mile. Who walked further? Well, the toughest one is keeping these guys labeled. Two-thirds is Jamie, right? So if we need to have them labeled J-A and J-O, two-thirds was Jamie, three-fourths was John, and they don't want greater than, less than, or equal to, but we're going to have to apply this. Our only two choices for an answer on this, they want to know who walked further, you're either going to tell them Jamie walked further or John walked further, right? So let's figure out who walked further. 3 times 3, that's 9. Go over to the other side, 4 times 2, that's 8. So, who walked further? 
Looks to me like it was John who walked further. They do not want greater than, less than, or equal. They want to know the name of who walked further. What John walked was greater than what Jamie walked. What Jamie walked is less than what John walked. And that is the end. You're definitely going to want to go slow and careful on the Socrative quiz. Okay, good luck.